a new Fusion. Fusion SE. This is perhaps the most bang for your buck that you can get in today's RC world. FOC brushless system, it's a two-in-one, so the motor has the speed control built into it. If you are familiar at all with the quick run lineup, you have heard of the Fusion and the Fusion Pro, and this is the replacement for the original Fusion. It's available in 1200 and 1800 KV. This is an 1800 version. And it does all the things the original Fusion did, but it comes in at under a hundred bucks. I think you can find it at most websites for $79.99 type of deal. So these are available for pre-order right now. I am very lucky that I got one of the very first package samples. So often I do a quick look of a pre-production sample, which I happen to have right here. This is the 1200 that I was sent to do a bunch of running with and it works awesome. But this is an actual packaged production version. These are available for pre-order right now, and we should have them shipping in a couple weeks. So maybe in time for Christmas. I really don't know. Don't quote me on all that stuff. But we're going to pop open this quick run Fusion SE and take a look. So these work with the LED program card, but they do not include the program card. So if you already have one of those LED cards, you'll be able to use that with this as well. Any of these will, will do the job. They just display the settings that are on the inside. So if you do not have a program card from a regular the original, I guess you'd say, Fusion, which many of us do, you can reference the chart here. It'll have what your settings mean. So you can just ignore whatever sticker you have on your box and use this chart to make sure you got the right stuff. But it, it just so happens that the Fusion SE has all the same settings as the original Fusions did. So that's kind of nice. Some of the vehicles, the they have their receiver boxes kind of hidden. So this guy allows you to extend your RX wires to your receiver if needed. But there we have it, that Fusion SE. All the goodness of the original Fusion in a more cost-effective design. These non-machine cans, these are like what they call drawn steel cans or the normal style cans, save a bunch of cost. So you get all the same goodness inside in a cost-effective format. Still has the normal eighth inch shaft and the size changed just a little bit. We're gonna get my calipers on here. My other pro tip for folks to call, the best thing you can do for your RC hobby is get you a pair of cheap calipers so you can just check the size of things and not have to worry about it. 58 millimeters in length and a 36 millimeter diameter. So it's a 3658 motor. So this guy here is my original Fusion sample that I got. And you can see it's 64 millimeters and 36 millimeter diameter. So the Fusion SE a little shorter now than the original Fusions were at 58 millimeters in length. Fusion SE is rated for two cell to three cell. It has a switching BEC inside, which means that you shouldn't really need an external BEC for what this guy does. Uh, BEC is six volts or 7.4 volts, and it is rated at four amps as a standard. Anytime I do an unboxing, I like to walk through the basics of an install. So these are things that you can do before you install it. If you got a tricky install, you can get it calibrated and all that to your radio ahead of time. So. A lot of times people take a new system, they plug it in and they just run it and they never really know that there is a calibration process that can and definitely should be done so that everything works as it should. So if you didn't know, speed control is always gonna go into channel number two on your receiver, that is the throttle. Uh, my radio is turned on and we're gonna run through basic calibration. So. I'm gonna explain it, then I'm gonna do it. It's a long press and hold, and then it'll start to blink at you. Then you let go of the button. You'll leave the radio at neutral. You'll tap it to set neutral. Then you'll pull it to full throttle. You'll tap it to set full throttle, and then you'll push it and hold it full reverse and tap it to set full reverse. So we're gonna do that next. So press and hold. It starts to blink. And that's waiting for neutral. And then full throttle and hold. Beeps twice beeps three times. It does some more noises after that. And then once it comes back to a solid red, you get operation. So you can see neutral is red. And as you go through, it blinks. And when you get to full throttle, it's solid. And in reverse, it does that same process. There are some other secret processes that are a little different on an FOC system over a regular system. And it's something called automatic motor pairing. Now, this process 
is, of course, is explained in your instruction manual. So, to start the automatic motor pairing process, you have the speed control turned off, obviously disconnected from the receiver, plugged into a battery pack, and then you just press and hold this button until the light starts to flash green. It'll flash red first. We're holding it. And after about an eight count, it should start to flash green, and then you can let go, and the motor takes care of the rest. So it runs the motor on itself, one direction and the other direction and at different speeds. And if you do ever have a problem with your FOC system, it starts to act weird, or you get some funny throttle stuff, do this automatic motor pairing process and that should clear it up for you. It's just kind of a reset of the sensors. But you can see it does it at a couple different speeds and this is why you want to have it disconnected from your drivetrain because if you do have a pinion gear installed or hooked up to the vehicle, it's going to drive the wheels and it kind of affects the, the calibration process. So. But it takes, uh, you know, 10, 20 seconds, probably maybe, maybe 30 seconds. It depends. I don't think it depends. I think it's the same every time, but it does one quick run up like that. And then it beeps at you and it's done. Now, this is blinking red because it's not plugged into the receiver. So that's the, the no signal blink, if you will. But that is automatic motor pairing for your Fusion SE. All right, next thing we're gonna do is take a look at the programming options that the Fusion SE has available. And what there is is a little plug on the end of your switch. And there's a port in there that you plug in your program. It'll work with, like I said, any LED program card. It's the same settings that the original Fusion have. So if you have one of those laying around, that is great. So this side is, it matters which direction it plugs in, it's marked. And the same is true on the switch itself, it matters which direction it's plugged in. So you get them lined up correctly. This, the funny shape is the white wire. And then this can, this will work with it plugged into the receiver, but you may have to turn your radio on. If you don't have your radio turned on, the receiver can output some signals and then block out the programming options. So I'm just gonna leave it unplugged for now. You turn on the speed control, the lights come on, and then we can talk about what all these settings do. Throttle matching, you can enable this or disable this, and this basically turns the FOC on or off. So FOC gives you a very one-to-one -one and linear um, throttle response. The motor RPM matches the throttle versus an input that you're giving it. So it takes away any stall that happens on hills. Some people love that, some people don't. They want it to feel more like a brush motor. So if you turn the throttle matching to disable, it's more like a brush motor. Ooh, wait. Lipo Cells has auto 2S and 3S. Auto is if you run two different voltage battery packs, but if you run 3S all the time, you can set it to 3S. The third setting is voltage cutoff, and this is for if you're going to run nickel metal hydrides, you can set it to disabled. And then low, intermediate, and high are the different voltage cutoff levels low voltage, medium voltage, or high voltage. And it varies a little bit on the setup, the plugs, the batteries. So that's why there's not a number there, because a lot of times it's not going to match by the time you get back to charge your battery. It causes some confusion. Low is as low as you want to get safely, it's probably 3.3 volts per cell. Intermediate's probably closer to 3.6 or 3.7 per cell and high is almost always going to be above 3.7 per cell so it gives you a, a basic range to work with ESC thermal protection you can turn that up or down or off I always leave it on and then motor rotation this is an important one if you ever install a system into your vehicle and when you give it the throttle the it runs the tires backwards you, you want to use the motor rotation to, to correct that you don't want to switch the switch on your radio because then the forward becomes reverse reverse becomes forward for most crawler applications it's not a huge deal but that means your sometimes your reverse is going to be faster than your forward depending on the default settings oh man i forgot to push the button uh, and then number six is BEC voltage. That changes the BEC power of the speed control. So if you have high voltage servos, you can run them on that higher voltage. You don't have to run high voltage servos on higher voltage. They work fine on the lower voltage. They're just a little slower, a little less power. Drag brake force is the strength of your drag brakes. If you need more holding power on the hills or less holding power on the hills, you can adjust that. It sets what your brake is when you let off the throttle and it's at neutral. Drag brake rate is one of my favorites. It controls how quickly the speed control is going to apply the drag brakes. So if you want to have that sensation of mashing on the brakes really quick, you run that higher at level nine. If you like a slow application of the brakes, you can turn it lower. I usually run mine on my Fusion setups like around one or two if I can, because I like it to be nice and slow because I do a lot of like, you drive fast and let off the throttle. It makes it a lot easier to deal with. And when you're driving slow, you usually, you don't need that drag brake to slap on super hard either. And then number nine is your max reverse force. 
some of us are not experts at reversing our throttle pushing on the trigger so this allows you to lower the reverse power and make things a little bit smoother at times i guess final note is when you make your setting changes you got to hit okay to save some people forget to do that and it doesn't put the settings in there. and don't forget when you go to put this all back away put your little rubber plugger back in there we get folks that lose these plugs and then water gets in there and makes everything stop working and you don't want that just a quick reminder, we do have a podcast. It's called RC Stuff. We give away up. a free Hobbywing system each and every episode. That's the first and third Friday of every single month. Look it up on your favorite podcast service and find out how to enter to win. As always, folks, thanks for joining us here on the Nerd Bench. New every Tuesday on the Charlie Show. This has been a quick look and an unboxing of the all-new Fusion SE, a super value-packed FOC 2-in-1 brushless combo for your rock crawler. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will see you next time.